Hello, welcome to Finding Exact Trigonometric Function Values, Simplifying the Unit Circle. My name is Mike Callahan, and I am a STEM educator. Simplifying the Unit Circle. Well, what is the Unit Circle? It is a tool that allows anyone to calculate the exact value of trigonometric functions of several angles. Now the usual way of presenting this circle might seem to be too complex for the beginning student of trigonometry. And it turns out it's easy to simplify this circle but still keep its utility. So let's look at the way that the unit circle is traditionally presented. And you can see that this can be pretty intimidating for a beginning student of trigonometry. It turns out that we don't need this much information. If you understand how the circle is created, you can get by with just about a fourth of it. So let's review some trigonometric functions. If we have a right triangle, remember the long side is called the hypotenuse. We have our angle theta highlighted. The side of the triangle that's opposite of theta is called the opposite, and the side of the triangle that is connected to theta, that is not the hypotenuse, is called the adjacent. So you have to remember so katoa, so katoa. The sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, and that's where so comes from. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and that's the ka. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, and that's the toa. Also remember that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. The cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, which is 1 over the sine. The secant is the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and that's 1 over the cosine. And the cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite, and that's 1 over the tangent. Let's see how the previous ratios become simplified if we assume the hypotenuse is equal to 1. The sine is just the opposite. The cosine is just the adjacent. The tangent hasn't changed. That's still the opposite over the adjacent, or the sine or the cosine. The cosecant is just 1 over the opposite, or 1 over the sine. The secant is 1 over the adjacent, or 1 over the cosine. And the cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite, or 1 over the tangent. Angles are measured in both degrees and radians, and so we're going to have to get familiar with both forms. There are two pi radians in 360 degrees. So let's label the quadrant angles. At beginning we have 0, then we move up to 90 degrees, and that is pi over 2 in radians, then swinging over to 180 degrees, that's pi radians, down to 270 degrees, and that's 3 pi over 2 radians, and once you make the whole circle, that's 360 degrees, or 2 pi. Again, we have to memorize these four values. It turns out there are only three other angles to memorize. Now let's build our unit circle. If we made the hypotenuse equal to 1, which is a unit, then the ratios for sine and cosine just become single values. If we place our right triangle in the center of a circle and the radius of that circle is 1, then the opposite is just simply the y value, and the adjacent is just the x value. 
So in a unit circle, the sine of theta is just the y value, and the cosine of theta is just the x value. Now let's put a zero degree angle in a unit circle. Now you can't draw a triangle with a zero degree angle, but it's easy to see in a unit circle. So zero degrees of course are zero radians. The x value is 1, the y value is 0. So that means the sine of theta is 0 and the cosine is 1. Since the tangent is the sine over the cosine, the tangent is just 0 over 1 or just plain old 0. The cosecant is 1 over the sine and that would be 1 over 0 which is undefined. The secant is 1 over the cosine, so that's just 1 over 1, or just 1. And the cotangent is 1 over the tangent, and again, that's 1 over 0, so the cotangent is undefined. And notice, if you know how the circle is constructed, you would quickly get that the point is 1 comma 0, that's obvious, so really there's nothing to memorize for a zero degree angle. Let's go all the way over to the other side. If we use theta equal to a hundred degree angle, or that's the same thing as pi radians, then the absolute values are going to be the same as a zero degree angle, only the sign is going to change. So 180 degrees is pi radians, the x value is minus 1, the y value is 0, the sine is 0, and the cosine is minus 1. The tangent is sine over cosine, and that's 0. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, so that means the cosecant is undefined. The secant is 1 over the cosine, so the secant is minus 1. The cotangent is 1 over the tangent, so the cotangent is undefined. And again, thinking about how the unit circle is constructed, if 180 degrees would put your point as minus 1, 0, and if you know where all your ratios come from. It's obvious and there's nothing to memorize. Let's look at a 90 degree angle now. Again, we can't build a right triangle with a 90 degree angle, but you can see it in a unit circle pretty easily. 90 degrees is pi over 2 radians. x is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. The sine is 1, the cosine is 0. And the tangent is sine over cosine, so the tangent is undefined. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, so that's 1. The secant is 1 over the cosine, so the secant is undefined. The cotangent is 1 over the tangent, so the cotangent is 0. And since on a 90 degree angle, our point's going to be 0 comma 1. That's also obvious, just thinking of how the circle is constructed. So, again, nothing to memorize. Last, let's look at a 270 degree angle in a unit circle. The absolute values are the same as the 90 degree, and so only again, only the sign will change. 270 degrees is 3 pi over 2 radians. x is 0, y is negative 1. The sine is negative 1, the cosine is 0. The tangent, which is sine over cosine, is undefined. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, so that's also negative 1. 
The secant is 1 over the cosine, so the secant is undefined. The cotangent is 1 over the tangent, so the cotangent is 0. And since 0, comma, negative 1 is obvious, thinking of how the circle is constructed, there is nothing to memorize. Now you saw in the previous slides that absolute values get repeated quite a bit, only the signs change. Because of that, mathematicians have broken the unit circle into four quadrants. The first quadrant, quadrant 1, is angles between 0 and 90 degrees, or 0 and pi over 2. Quadrant 2 is between 90 and 180 degrees, or pi over 2 to pi. Quadrant 3 is 180 to 270 degrees, or pi to 3 pi over 2. And quadrant 4 is from 270 to 360, or 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi. We need to memorize these four values, as I stated earlier both the degrees and the radians. So let's look at the four quadrants. The first quadrant, again the angles between 0 and pi over 2, or 0 and 90 degrees. Notice that both x and y are going to be positive. So all the trigonometric functions will be positive. So for this quadrant, we're going to remember all. For the second quadrant, our angle is going to be between pi over 2 to pi, or 90 to 180. Since x is negative and y is positive, our trigonometric ratios that contain only y will be positive. Remember, the hypotenuse is plus 1. So sine and cosecant will be positive. All the others will be negative. So remember students for sine. For quadrant 3, the angle is between pi and 3 pi over 2, or 180 to 270. Here, x and y are both going to be negative, so trigonometric ratios that contain both x and y will be positive. If you have a negative over a negative, that's going to be a positive. So that means that tangent and cotangent will be positive. All the others are going to be negative, and we're going to remember take for tangent. The last quadrant, quadrant 4, is between 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi, or 270 to 360. Since x is positive and y is negative, tri trigonometric ratios that contain only x will be positive. That makes cosine and secant will be positive. All the others will be negative. And we're going to remember calculus for cosine. Let's look at negative angles. To determine where you lie on the circle, you just move clockwise. So, moving around from 0 to negative 90 would put us in quadrant 4. From negative 90 to negative 180 would put us in quadrant 3 from negative 180 to negative 270 would put us in quadrant 2, and negative 270 to negative 360 would put us in quadrant 1. However, you really don't need to worry about negative angles. All you have to do is take your negative angle and add it to 360, and that will give us the equivalent positive angle. So for an example, if we take negative 90 and we add it to 360, you will see that that's the exact same thing 
as 270. Let's look at some angles now. We're going to start with 45 degrees and we're going to start with a right triangle. If the one acute angle is 45 degrees, the other must be 45 degrees as well. Remember, the sum of the angles in a triangle has to be 180. Also notice that this triangle is isosceles, so the opposite and the adjacent sides have the same length. If we set the hypotenuse to 1, and then using the Pythagorean theorem, we find out that the sides must have a length of the square root of one-half getting rid of the radical in the denominator that is the square root of two over two. So the sine of 45 degrees equals the cosine of 45 degrees which is the square root of two over two. This is a value you need to memorize the square root of two over 2. Let's take our 45 degree angle and put it in the unit circle. 45 degrees is pi over 4 radians. So x and y are going to be the square root of 2 over 2. The sine and the cosine are also going to be square root of 2 over 2. The tangent is the sine over the cosine, and in this case that's going to be 1. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, so that would be the square root of 2. The secant will be the same, and the cotangent will be the same as the tangent, 1. But remember, you really only need to memorize the square root of 2 over 2 if you know the definitions of the other functions then you can derive the tangent, the cosecant, and the secant, and the cotangent. So the 45 degree or pi over 4 angle if we move it into different quadrants you can see that the absolute values are all going to be the square root of 2 over 2. Only the sine will change, but we can calculate that by using this phrase, all students take calculus. For the 135 degree, which is pi, 3 pi over 4, the absolute values also will be the same the angle in quadrant 2 is going to be, if we remember our phrase, all students, so only the sine and the cosecant will be positive. So sine is the square root of 2 over 2, cosine is that negative value, tangent is negative 1, cosecant is square root of 2, secant is negative square root of 2, and cotangent is negative 1. Moving into quadrant 3, the 225 degree angle, or 5 pi over 4. Again, the absolute values are still the same. So we take all students take, so t for take, so that means the tangent and the cotangent will be the only positive functions. So the sine is negative square root of 2 over 2 cosine is the same, the tangent is still 1, the cosecant is negative square root of 2, the secant is negative square root of 2, and the cotangent is 1. Finally, on the 315 degree angle, or that's 7 pi over 4 radians, the absolute values are still the same. We think of all students take calculus, C, so only the cosine and the secant will be positive. So the sine will be negative square root of 2 over 2. The cosine will be square root of 2 over 2. 
the tangent will be negative 1, the cosecant will be negative square root of 2, the secant will be positive square root of 2, and the cotangent will also be negative 1. So here are the summary of all the values for 45 degree angles in the four quadrants. And you can see it, it looks like a lot of data to memorize, but it turns out it really isn't. So we are going to create a, a method that will simplify this task. And the only thing you need to remember for this angle is the square root of 2 over 2 and that little phrase, all students take calculus. Let's get into the idea of a reference angle. As you saw with the 45 degrees, all the angles, it turns out, can be referenced to an angle in quadrant 1, and we're going to call that the reference angle. So the reference angle for the following angles is 45 degrees, and that's plus or minus 45, plus or minus 135, plus or minus 225, plus or minus 315. And for the radians, our reference angle for these angles is pi over 4. Plus or minus pi over 4, plus or minus 3 pi over 4, plus or minus 5 pi over 4, plus or minus 7 pi over 4. So, all you have to do first is con get rid of negative angles by adding that 360 or 2 pi as we already talked about and ignoring signs. Then determine the angle quadrant. To find the reference angle for an angle in quadrant 2 or 3, subtract it from 180 or pi and again ignore the signs. To find the reference angle for an angle in quadrant 4, subtract from 360 or 2 pi. Now we're going to look at some other angles. And let's start with an equilateral triangle where all the sides equal 1. All the angles, of course, have to be 60 degrees. And we can split that triangle if we run a line down the middle and it will split it into two 30, 60 degree right triangles. And that's really what we're after. Notice the short side is one half of the entire uh, side, so that's just going to be one half. And the other side, again, using the Pythagorean theorem, has to be the square root of 3 over 2. So a right triangle with a 30 degree angle must have the other angle as 60 degrees. And for the 30 degree angle, the adjacent, if the hypotenuse is 1, the adjacent's length is the square root of 3 over 2. The opposite is 1 half. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. The cosine is the square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent, if you do the division, is going to be the square root of 3 over 3. So let's place that 30 degree triangle into the unit circle. 30 degrees is pi over 6 radians. The x value, which will be the cosine, is the square root of 3 over 2. The y value, which will be the sine, is 1 half. The tangent Again, it's the sine over the cosine. In this case, that's going to be the square root of 3 over 3. The cosecant is 1 over the sine, and that's just going to be 2. The secant is 1 over the cosine, and that's going to be 2 on the square root of 3 over 3. And the cotangent is the square root of 3. For this angle, you only need to memorize one half and the square root of three 
over 2. So look at other angles with a 30 degree reference. Again, 30 is pi over 6. So this will be the reference angle for plus or minus 30, plus or minus 150, plus or minus 210, or plus or minus 330. And for radians, it's plus or minus pi over 6, plus or minus 5 pi over 6, plus or minus 7 pi over 6, and plus or minus 11 pi over 6. Here are a summary of all the 30 degree angle values. But again, the only thing you need to remember is 1 half, the square root of 3 over 2, and that phrase, all students take calculus. So let's put our triangle on the other side. So the right triangle with a 60 degree angle must have the other angle as 30. So for the 60 degree angle, if the hypotenuse is 1, then the adjacent is 1 half, and the opposite is the square root of 3 over 2. So for a 60 degree angle, the sine is the square root of 3 over 2, the cosine is 1 half, the tangent is the square root of 3. And notice these values are reversed compared with the 30 degree angle. So if you memorize the 30 degree angle values, all you have to do, and when you're given a 60 degree angle, is just reverse the order. Let's place our 60 degree triangle in the unit circle. 60 degrees is pi over 3 radians. So x, which is the cosine, will be 1 half. y, which is the sine, will be the square root of 3 over 2. The tangent is the sine over the cosine. That's just going to be the square root of 3. The cosecant is 1 over the sine. That's going to be 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. The secant which is 1 over the cosine, will be 2. The cotangent is 1 over the tangent, which will be the square root of 3 over 3. And again, you only need to reverse the values that you memorize for the 30 degree angle. So angles with a 60 degree reference, again, 60 is pi over 3 radians. So this is the reference angle for plus or minus 60, plus or minus 120, plus or minus 240, and plus or minus 300 degrees. And for radians, plus or minus pi over 3, plus or minus 2 pi over 3, plus or minus 4 pi over 3, and plus or minus 5 pi over 3. So here are our summary of the 60 degree angle values. And again, just reverse the values you memorized for the 30 degree angles and you should be fine. What about angles greater than 360 or 2 pi or less than 300, negative 360 or negative 2 pi? Well, it turns out these angles can be reduced to an angle less than 360 and greater than negative 360. So all you have to do is continue to subtract 360 degrees or 2 pi until the angle is less than 360. And remember the negative angles, uh, we just want to add 360 or 2 pi until you get greater than 0. I call this removing the extra rotation. And quite a few problems will actually have angles greater than 360. It's time to introduce the simpler unit circle. Everything you need is on this diagram. 
these are the main angles that you can calculate exactly. When you're given a homework problem, the reference angle will more than likely be one of these five angles. The half square roots are actually easy to memorize. What we've done is it's, we know that the first angle being uh, zero, we're going to remember that as the square root of zero over two. The second one, which is one half, we're going to remember that as the square root of one over two. Then the square root of two over two, the square root of three over two, we've already memorized that. And the last one, we're going to memorize it as the square root of 4 over 2, which of course is 1. So now it's time to look at our handy guide to unit circle. And we're going to start with sine. If you open up your left hand, it kind of looks like quadrant 1, doesn't it? If we label the fingers as radian angles, then the sine values at the fingertips will be easy to remember. So the pinky is 0, the ring finger is pi over 6, the middle finger is pi over 4, index finger is pi over 3, and the thumb is pi over 2. Then our values, starting with the pinky, are the square root of 0 over 2, square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, square root of 4 over 2. So, now remember you start out with these values, but before you turn in your final value, be sure you simplify it. And if you have a radical in the denominator, you probably want to remove that. And I want to warn you, as tempting as it may be, don't write this on your hand during an exam. You'll be caught. For cosine, all you have to do is reverse the values at the fingertips. Starting with the thumb, square root of 0 over 2, then the square root of 1 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, square root of 3 over 2, and the pinky ends up with the square root of 4 over 2. So let's look at the steps for calculating an exact trigonometric function first thing is you want to remove any extra rotation. Second of all, you want to convert any negative angle to a positive angle. Now you need to determine the quadrant and note the sine of the function. Next, determine the reference angle. Determine if you need the sine, the cosine, or both. And using the hand diagram, determine the absolute value, then employ the correct sign. Finally, simplify and remove the radical from the denominator if necessary. So seven steps. Let's look at an example. We want to find the secant for pi over 4. Step 1, well pi over 4 is well below 2 pi, so there's no extra rotation. We can skip that step. And the angle is positive, so we don't have to worry about that adjustment either. Since pi over 4 is less than pi over 2, the angle obviously is in quadrant 1, so the function is going to be positive. The reference angle is pi over 4 in this case. This is the secant, so we're going to need 1 over the cosine. Using the hand diagram, the absolute value is going to be the reciprocal of the square root of 2 over 2, and that is just 2 over the square root of 2. And our sine will be positive, and of course, when you remove the, the square root of 2 out of the denominator, you're just going to end up with the square root of 2. Let's look at another example. We want to know the tangent of negative 120. Well, we're still below uh, 
negative 360, so there's no extra rotations to worry about. The positive equivalent angle is going to be 360 minus 120, so that's 240. Since we're between 180 and 270, we're in quadrant 3, and remembering all students take, the tangent is going to be positive. The reference angle is 60 in this case. Since this is a tangent, we're going to need the sine over the cosine. Using the hand diagram, the absolute value is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 divided by the square root of 1 over 2, and that's just going to be the square root of 3, and the sine is positive. Let's look at one where we do have an extra rotation. We want to find the sine of 23 pi over 6. Well, we're greater than 2 pi here, so removing that extra rotation, we end up with 11 pi over 6. It's positive, so we don't have to worry about that negative adjustment. Since we are between 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi, our angle is in quadrant 4. Remembering our all students take calculus, the sine is going to be negative. The reference angle is just going to be pi over 6. We need the sine. Using the hand diagram, we know the absolute value is the square root of 1 over 2, or just 1 half, and the sine is negative, so our final value is negative 1 half. So let's look at our final example here, cotangent of negative 5 pi over 2. Well, we're greater than negative 2 pi, so we have an extra rotation in there, we want to remove it and we're left with negative pi over 2. Converting it to the positive equivalent, we end up with 3 pi over 2. And we are kind of in between quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, so our cotangent is going to be positive. Our ref angle is going to be pi over 2 and we need the cosine over the sine. Using the hand diagram, uh, we run into a problem. We have the absolute value is going to be the square root of 4 over 2 divided by the square root of 0 over 2. That's 1 over 0, which is undefined. It's not unusual for the tangent and the cotangent to be undefined. So, here's a summary of all the exact trig values you could possibly get. I'm not asking you to memorize all this. All you really need to remember is the definitions of the functions, so katoa, the limits of the quadrants for 90 degree, pi over 2, 180, pi, 270, 3 pi over 2 and 360, 2 pi. The signs in the quadrants, again, all students take calculus and the hand diagram. If you understand how to use these four things, then you should be good to go. Many times, you will have to work backwards. You'll be given an exact value for a function and ask for the angles that match that value. And usually you'll be limited by the range between 0 and pi over 2. You will have at least two angles that match. So again, working backwards, note the function and the sine. Then to determine the quadrants that you'll be dealing with, using the hand diagram, determine what the reference angle is, and then convert the reference angle to the qu quadrants. So let's look at an example here. We we're given that the cosine of some angle theta is equal to negative the square root of 2 over 2. 
Since we have a negative cosine using all students take calculus, those angles must be in quadrants 2 and 3. The reference angle is pi over 4 by the hand diagram. So, pi over 4, if you put it into quadrant 2, is 3 pi over 4, and quadrant 3 is 5 pi over 4. So that would be your answer. 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4. So rather than memorize the unit circle, it is much easier and much better to understand it. Really the hand diagram is all you need to memorize as far as the absolute values of the functions. This method will work for all exact trigonometric values no matter how complex. If you're given another angle you're going to have to use a calculator. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this slideshow to be useful. If so, please click on like. I have some other slideshows in my areas you might want to subscribe. In any case, uh, good luck on your future trigonometric homework assignments.